Welcome everybody. X-Rite was kind enough to lend me a Color Monkey photo device to try out. So I thought I'd do a video showing you how you would create printer profiles using this device. What I love about it is that the software is very easy to use and the process is very straightforward. Now in the Color Monkey line, there are two products. The display product profiles your monitor and it runs about $170. The photo product profiles your monitor and can create printer profiles. Now in order for your printed results to match your monitor, you do need to have both a printer profile and to profile your monitor. The Color Monkey Photo device, which also creates the printer profiles, runs about $450, so there's a significant premium. Now you can get printer profiles from other sources. Most paper manufacturers create and give away free printer profiles for their papers. If you're not satisfied with those or you're working with papers for which profiles are not available, you can get custom profiles made from third-party services. But if you're not satisfied with your paper manufacturer's profiles or you're using a lot of papers for which profiles aren't available, then it may be economical for you to invest in a device such as this. Now this is actually much cheaper than a lot of devices on the market. So in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and create a printer profile. So I'm gonna click on Profile My Printer and I'm gonna create a new profile. I'm gonna choose my Epson 3880 as the printer I wanna profile. And then I would need to make a profile for each paper that I'm using. Every paper will handle the inks differently so I need my profiles to be paper specific. I'm gonna go ahead and do this for my Hannah Mule photo rag paper. And I'll go ahead and click on next here. And the next step is to actually print a test sheet that has these five strips of color swatches. So the software knows exactly what colors these are. Once this is printed, I'll use a device that will actually read the printed piece of paper to measure what the output is then the software will compare what was actually printed to what it expected, or in other words, what's accurate, will calculate any inaccuracies and build those into a profile so that as your photos go to the printer, those inaccuracies are corrected for. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit print here. This is telling me that I've gotta get the settings correct in my printer driver, my printer software, in order for this to work correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue and it's gonna bring up my Epson printer driver. Now, this would look different for a different printer. It definitely will look different on a Mac, but there are three settings that are absolutely critical. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into properties here. And the first one is the media type. This is the generic paper type. The specific paper is Hannah Mule Photo Rag, but I need to set the generic media type. Now, I know how to set this because I've read the instructions from Hannah Mule on what to use here. So this would come with your paper or you'd find it on the paper manufacturer website. So in my case, for this paper, Hannah Mule says to use Velvet Fine Art Media Type. Next, I wanna set the print quality, again, according to the paper instructions. So in this case, I wanna set the quality level to four, which is 1440 DPI. For glossy papers, generally, it's gonna be five, which will be 2880. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off high speed here and say okay. So media type and quality are determined by the paper manufacturer. The next one, and what's absolutely critical in order to get a good result, is to turn color management off here in the printer driver. So I know for my printer that I click on custom here, click on the drop down, and turn this off but look up in your printer manual how to turn off color adjustment or color management. So media type, quality, and color management. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And if I did this again, it would send that test chart to my printer. I've in fact already printed my test chart, so I'll hit cancel. Now, if I had printed and then I hit next, on the next page here, the software would count down 10 minutes to measure the drying time of my print. So you wanna make sure that your prints dry for at least 10 minutes before you measure the results. I've already printed my target and it's dried, so I'll skip this. I'll go to next. 
Now it's time to actually use the device to read the results. Now you're not going to see me do this, but I'll throw up a diagram on how this is done. I'm simply going to click on the button on the device and drag from the bottom to the top on the first strip. This took me a little bit to figure out, but there's a video here, and then there are text instructions right here as well. Once I read those, frankly, it was very clear. So I'm going to go ahead and click, hold, and drag on my first test strip here. And then I'm going to let go. And because this jumped to two, it means I was successful on one. And I can go ahead and click, hold, and drag on two with the device, and then on three. Now that I didn't do precisely enough. And I'll go ahead, click and drag to do it a bit more carefully. And we're ready to go. So I'll do number four, and then I'll do number five. Now that it's not highlighted, I know I've done the whole thing successfully. I can click on Next. And now it's generating a second test sheet for me to print based on the results of the first one that I scanned. It's producing swatches for colors that it needs more information on or more refinement. I would go ahead and print this one as well. And I would need to go back into the printer driver to reset the settings. I found that they're not sticky from test chart to test chart. So media type, quality, color management. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this, though. I've already printed mine. I'll click on Next. Here's the timer to count down on the drying process. I'll skip this, go to Next. And now I'll scan that second test sheet that I printed out. So click, drag to the top. Now when you get to the top of the strip, you should actually drag to the left. So click, drag to the top, and then drag to the left in the white. That's in the instructions. Let me do the third one here. And then I'll do the fourth one. And you can see I'm actually getting better at this as I go along. The next step is to actually save this profile. So I'm not going to save it with this name. I'm actually just going to save it as test, test, so that we can find it. I'm going to show you how to pull this up in Lightroom. I'm going to click on Save. It's going to calculate this profile. I'll click on Next, and in fact, we're done. Now next, what I want to do is show you how to access this profile in Lightroom. So I'm here in Lightroom in the Print module, and if I scroll all the way down on the right-hand side to the Print Job panel, to the Color Management section, my goal is to change this profile from Managed by Printer to that specific profile that I created. And I would do this whenever I'm using that Hannah Mule photo rag paper. So I'm going to click on Managed by Printer. It's going to give me a list of all of the profiles I've used in Lightroom so far, but my test one doesn't show. So I'm going to go all the way to the bottom, which you can't see, to Other, dot, dot, dot. And it's going to pull up a window showing me every single profile sitting out in my system profile folder. And I don't need to know where that folder is, because Lightroom does. So what I want to do is find that test profile, or that new profile I had created, put a check mark next to it, and then say OK. And then from now on, it will appear in the dropdown here. So now I'm ready to actually print with this profile. Now, of course, there's more to printing with profiles and printing in general. And that's not the purpose of this specific video. There's more on my website about this. And it's also covered extensively in my video series, Producing Great Output, which covers all of the output concepts that are important for photographers to understand. Color management, calibrating your monitor, printer profile, what printer profiles are about, size and resolution, sharpening, etc and then goes into the four output modules. So how to create great books, slideshows, prints, and web galleries. It's 12 and a half hours of instruction on 55 videos. The last thing I want to show you very briefly here in the Color Monkey software is that you can continue to refine your profiles if you're not completely satisfied with them. For example, if you print out a particular photo and find that one or more colors in that photo are not printed as accurately as you'd like, you can use that photo to refine the profile. You would click back on Profile My Printer here, and now you would choose to optimize an existing profile. 
and you choose the profile you want to work on. So we'll work on test, test. And we would load the photo that we wanted to analyze. Now this needs to be a JPEG or a TIFF. So you'd need to export a JPEG or TIFF copy from Lightroom to be able to use it in this software. As it says here, the new target or test sheet will be generated based on colors that it finds in this photo that you load. Then you would go through the exact same process of printing out that test sheet, reading it, and rebuilding the profile. So this is all great functionality with XWrite's Color Monkey Photo. I'm Laura Shu. I hope you've enjoyed this video.